except for the Antichrist. We're seeing many Antichrists even now as we speak. Uh, uh, you look at uh, uh, a lot of our, our governmental places, they're Antichrist, they're against Christ. And uh, in this last day, in, in the days to come, it's really tough for a, a Judeo-Christian. And when I talk about a Judeo-Christian, I'm talking about the one that really truly believes God's word. Are you hearing me? And not making up their own word, but believes the word of God. You'll look like you've dropped off a turnip truck someplace. In other words, you know how they, they, they deem uh, radical Islam, Muslims. Well, if you truly believe the Word of God and stand on the Word of God like we believe the Word of God, we'll be called the terrorist of Christianity. Now, some you know, you keep quiet on that, but understand they're already making that a mockery as we're even talking right now. So hear me, child of God. I don't know about you. It's time to suit up and do warfare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is coming back again. And when I talk about warfare, I'm talking about spiritual warfare. Are you hearing me? You cannot combat spiritual wickedness by, by physical means. Hallelujah. The only way you can combat a spirit is through spirit. And can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. So therefore, we've got power over the powers and principalities of hell because Christ has given us his Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, in Acts 1.8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Hallelujah. That word power there, if you look at that in the Greek, it simply means dunamis. It means dynamite, power, miraculous power, miracle working power. That's why we still pray for people around the altars, believing people to be healed and delivered and Set free in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Some might make mockery of that, but can I tell you something? Hallelujah. I've seen too many miracles over the years that I've ministered the gospel to disbelieve this book. Hallelujah. If Jesus healed back 2,000 years ago, he'll heal today in the name of the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what scripture declares. Praise God. He's a healer. Hallelujah. I had a grandson, my last, uh, latest grandson, uh, in the hospital, and they'd give him no no opportunity to live, said he had a sentence of death on him. But can I tell you something? When we begin to set ourselves in prayer, God raised him from the dead in Jesus' name. Now you go over and talk to him, and he said, you know what, I died. I died. He, t- he tells everybody, I died. <laughs> you know, and people don't understand what he's talking about. But hear me, he had the sentence of death in his life, and there are many that have the sentence of death in their lives. I can think of John sitting back there and I was in the hospital rooms when they didn't give no hope for you many several years back and and well John's still bouncing around and and uh, proved the doctors wrong but it tells me that proves that God's word is truth in the name of Jesus. Look at me. You're not stepping out of here until the Lord says your time is no more. Come on up here the child of God. Hallelujah to the lamb. Hallelujah. Let's not let our life be terminated at an early age in the name of the Lord Jesus, because I believe there's a lot of work for each and every one of us. We need laborers in the harvest field. It's time to be bold and speak up about the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time not to be be timid around our loved ones, but begin to tell them about the grace and the mercy of Jesus and that Jesus is coming back soon in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Last week we was talking about... Uh, uh, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've seen that uh, when the Lord comes, it'll be at the, the Battle of Armageddon. That's where the armies uh, uh, will come against Israel and surround Israel. And Israel would be, annihil- would be annihilated if it wouldn't be for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now understand, uh, uh, in Mark 13 and Mar- in Matthew 24, it's got the rapture of the church and it's got the second coming intermingled in between. And some, you know, they don't fully understand that. But you've got to have an idea of the word of God to understand, hallelujah, of the second coming and the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church, Christ doesn't come to set his foot on the face of the earth. We're going to meet him in the air. But we used to sing an old song, oh, there is going to be a meeting in the air. In the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, I'm going to meet you and meet you over there. 
in the home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. It will be glorious, I do declare, with God's own Son to be the leading one at that meeting in the air. We're going to meet him in the air. That's called the rapture of the church. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter says, we'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Stop and think of that. Instantly changed. This mortal will put on immortality. Hear me? Hallelujah. And we'll go up to meet our Savior in the air. Bless the Lord. We'll be coming back at the second coming when Christ comes to rule and reign for a thousand years. Hallelujah. At the end of the tribulation. But Israel will accept the Antichrist as their Messiah in the beginning because the Antichrist will come in as as a minister of peace. And Israel will think that this is their Messiah. And the Antichrist will set up his kingdom in the newly built temple over in Israel. How many know that they're already making plans and preparing plans to build the temple? At the moment that, what is it, a, a big mosque is setting on the, the, the Temple Mount, hallelujah, and how that's going to be removed, I don't know, but God's going to do it in the last day. Bless the Lord. But he's already getting things prepared. Look, the, the genealogy, they're preparing the gene, genealogy, trying to find the Levitical priesthood and go back to animal sacrifice. I thank God that we don't have to go to animal sacrifice anymore, but there's been one sacrifice once and for all, and that's the spotless lamb of the living God, Jesus Christ. Can you give the Lord a hand clap for Jesus? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But the, it, it gives us in detail of, of what's going to happen just before the second coming at the tribulation where we do warfare with the Antichrist armies. Hear me. Hallelujah. It said that the stars would fall from the skies. Meteorites would fall out of the skies. Uh, the, the, the sun would grow dark and the moon would grow dark. Some would say, how in the world could that happen? I don't know. God's God. He's the one that created the sun. He's the one that created the moon. And he can, he can turn the lights off yep. if he wants to. Matter of fact, he did. When Christ died on the cross, it was dark, pitch dark for three hours. And one of the Roman soldiers said, this was the Son of God. Hallelujah, made him a believer. Bless the Lord forevermore. But anyhow, uh, it said that the, the stars would fall from, from the skies, and we related a little bit, I uh, looked at a lot of commentaries and different things, and, and related that some of those stars, it could have been talking about the powers and principalities of the air. And Satan was called the morning star, I believe it was. And, and uh, at, at present, he, ha- he rules over uh, the, the, the heavens are the starry skies, so to speak. But when Christ comes back, a greater one than Satan will be put down and put under, and Christ will come to rule and reign and set up his kingdom out of the newly built temple in the name of the Lord. And look at me, we'll be ruling and reigning with him Amen. in Jesus' Amen. name. So it pays off to live holy and true before the Lord in Jesus' name. Then we go over into Mark thirteen twenty seven. Hallelujah. In Mark thirteen twenty seven, he said, Then shall he send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost parts of the earth to the uttermost parts of heaven. Hallelujah. As I said, this is speaking about the second coming of Jesus. Here he'll usher up his authority during the millennial reign. As I said, we'll rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll gather his elect from the uttermost parts of the earth. Now we need to stop and, 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 and think a little bit about the elect. Who in the world is the elect? Well, the elect is, is the 144,000 that are called out of, out of all the 12 tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. They was, they was, they was scattered abroad during, uh, what was it, A.D. 70 when Titus sacked, sacked uh, Jerusalem and they were spread all over. They went north. They're in Russia. They're, they went, went all over the world. But here, during the, the millennial reign, uh, and, and uh, the, the, the Jews will, will come back, or the angels will even be helping, hallelujah, to gather all the Jews to come back to Israel. 
Hallelujah to the Lamb. What a day that's going to be. And can I tell you something? There's, there, there's many of the Jews are going back to Israel even as we're speaking. They don't even know why they're going back. I uh, went to school back years ago with a, with a Jew and uh, he, he, he proceeded to tell me. Of course, I didn't know too much about Scripture back when I was in school, wasn't saved. But he told me, he said, I'm going back to Israel. He said, I'm going back to my roots. And I said, what are you going back there for? And he said, I don't know. I just got a compelling in my heart to go back to, to uh, Israel. So, you know, even then, back then, you could see that the Spirit of the Lord was drawing on the hearts of his people. And some think, well, you know, Israel's out of the picture anymore. The church is, is, is spiritual Israel, and Israel had their chance, so therefore they're forsaken of God. Well, we'll get into that just a little bit later on down along the line in this teaching and show you that Israel has scales over their eyes for a, for a season. And God will one day call them back. And this will be the time here at uh, the end of the tribulation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But angels will be very present at, at that time. Uh, they're present now, but they're, many times they're invisible. How many believe that? I be, I, let me ask this. How many believe in angels? If you don't believe in angels, you don't, you can't, you don't believe the word of God. Because we see angelic visitations uh, very much here in Scripture. But uh, it's going to be greater uh, uh, moves of angels, so to speak, in these end times, especially during the millennial reign. Hear me, they will not be invisible, but they will be visible. Matter of fact, the Bible says... uh, he, it says, "Be uh, don't forget to entertain strangers because some will entertain angels unawares. I don't know about you, but there might be times, hear me, here in this life, look at me, that maybe we might have entertained an angel and really don't even realize that we entertained an angel because he looked just like you and me. You see, an angel doesn't appear with wings on it. But they come in form of looking like a human. Hear me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I know uh, I've, I've said this before when I was in El Salvador down there and, and uh, on a missions team. Uh, I, I, I know that there, there was an angel that rescued us there and uh, because he was there one minute and gone the next. And uh, I said, man, it had to be an angel of the Lord that, that, that delivered us because... We was about ready to drown. We got in, caught in an undertow out there swimming in the ocean, and it was just taking us out and, and panic and what have you. And, and uh, we was going down for the count, and all of a sudden a guy appeared on a surfboard. And he said, just grab a hold of the surfboard. And we grabbed a hold of the surfboard, and he took us in. We started going up the bank, and I said, I always want to thank this guy, and turned around, and he's gone. He was just completely gone. I thought, that had to be an angel of the Lord because there's no, I mean, you could look down the beach, you could look all over and you could, you could have picked the guy out, but he wasn't there. Hallelujah. But I believe one day when I get into heaven, bless the Lord, he'll say, I was that guy on that surfboard. Praise the Lord. So, you know what? Some of us have probably entertained angels and you don't even really realize you've entertained angels. Bless the Lord. But they'll be very visible during the millennial reign because they'll even help in gathering all the Jews from north, south, east, and west. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 1, 13 and 14, it says this, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Set on my right hand until I make thine enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Hallelujah. Now look at this. If you look at that last part, uh, if you look at this and start dissecting a little bit, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Hallelujah. Those that will be or come into relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering spirits sent to them, Hallelujah, to minister to them that will be heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. When we pray for our loved ones, I believe God puts an angel, disperses an angel by them. I seriously do. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And matter of fact, 
I had a brother that prayed constantly and continuously for this guy. And I know that there have been many times that I've been wiped out, hear me, either driving a car, with being drunk, and not knowing what, where I was even at. When I was in the service, some of the things that I've done in the service, some of the places that I was at, some of the things that I was involved in, I know God had his hand upon me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember one time when uh, I was in the Navy and, and we had some old World War II ammunition that they had to get rid of and they, and it was, they was in the magazines or down in the where they, they kept uh, all the ammunition. It was like 5-inch 38 shells. And many of that, those ammunitions, they would, when you shoot them off, well, they'd blow up in the breach and blow the whole, uh, whole uh, uh, turret completely off and kill the people inside the, inside the, the, the turret. And uh, I don't know why they just didn't dump them over the overboard, but they didn't want to do that. They wanted to, to uh, shoot all that old material off and get rid of it and then throw the casings and everything overboard. And there was a ship just ahead of us uh, they did that, or what there was in the mount, and uh, one of the shells blew up in the breach, didn't go off properly, and blew up in the breach and killed all two guys in there handling those those uh, projectiles and the the powder casings to put in, and killed both of them. And we was the next ship to 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 uh, shoot all this this ammunition off. And guess who they picked? I only had six months left in the navy. And you know who they picked? Me. And can I tell you something? The first class and the second class, I said, why don't you guys jump in there? I said, you guys can get in there. I said, you're lifers. You get in there and do it. No, nah, you're going to listen to us. You're going in there. I said, hey, there's a lot of boot camps in here. Send one of them in here. I got six months left. And I said, I'm out of here. And they said, no, you're going in. And I, I you know, and, and you got to obey orders. I mean, what are you going to do when you're out in the middle of the ocean? Jump overboard? You're not going to swim to, to land. I didn't want to do it because I knew what was up. You know, I could be possibility be blowed up. But they, they put me in there, and I was in there by myself getting the powder and the projectile, putting it in the, into the magazine, and then you hit a, a button, and it automatically come up, and then instantly hit that primer in the back, and that powder would charge and the projectile would go out out the barrel and I remember uh, listening I had headsets on and I remember putting the powder in and putting the projectile in and they had a hole in the turret down below where the casing would fall down so it wouldn't be built up in the turret and they had a hole in that turret and I remember them saying this commence firing and I had that in there, and my heart was do doing this number. Because I knew what was, what was happening. And I, 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 I hit that button, and as soon as I hit that button, I dove for that hole. Like that. I was like a muskrat sliding down a bank. And I mean, I hit that hole, and out I went, and kabloom, she fired off. And I jumped back in there, done the very same thing, dove back in, Blue, she went off. And I thought, well, man, you know, I'm not getting nowhere doing this. So I just, you know, started throwing it in there and start shooting it off and ended up shooting all of it off. And I thought to myself, you know what? I've got a praying brother. And my brother was praying for me and interceding for me. And you know what? God was watching over me even back then because he knew that I would be an heir of salvation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You, some of you might be able to look back in your own life and say, man, if it wouldn't have been for, for uh, divine intervention here, uh, you know, possibility I could have been gone. You know, uh, that's all there is to it. But I thank God that even then I was being watched over by unseen forces called angels in, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I, under, I fully understand that now. Hallelujah, as I, I learn of the word of God. Praise the Lord. But they're all ministering spirits sent to them that are heir of salvation. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But at the time of the millennial reign, 
They'll be very visible. Angels will be very visible. We'll be able to see them. Why? Because we'll have spiritual bodies. And of course, even those that are unsaved during the millennial reign, they'll be able to see these angels. But there'll be a great calling from the four. Uh, uh, we've seen something about the four winds. Let me go back here just a second. Hallelujah. It says, uh, where am I at here? Uh, oh, here it is. Zechariah 2.6. He says, ho, ho. Come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread, uh, spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, saith the Lord God. Hallelujah. So here we can see, as Zechariah is prophesying, that there's going to be a great influx or a great comeback of Israel. Some of those in, in, in Russia. You look at Russia. Remember when the, when the curtain, the iron curtain fell? Look at all the Russian Jews that come out of Russia and now are established in Israel. Stop and think of this a second. That was only the act of God Almighty to tear down that wall. Remember Reagan, I believe it was, was the president of that time and told Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Hallelujah. It wasn't because of, uh, of Reagan. It was because God wanted to tear that wall down because he had Jewish people in there to bring them out and bring them back to Israel. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying this, hear me, we are living in the end times. We're seeing prophecy being fulfilled right before our very eyes. We just need to open up our eyes and see what's going on and not get carried away so much in this world to realize and recognize, hey, it's about the midnight hour. It's about home time. It's about time going home with the Lord Jesus Christ, not playing church or playing uh, patty cakes with the things of God, but getting serious with the Lord Jesus Christ because God's going to use those that are serious with him in the name of the Lord. In Zechariah 2, 6, or I'm sorry, in uh, Revelation 7, it describes four angels who hold the four winds as they stand on the four corners of the earth. They, they, they do the job of, of uh, passing judgment upon the world. Look at this, if you would, in Revelation 7 for just a second. Revelation 7. Remember, we're talking about the four winds, just kind of describing of what the Lord... What, is, what the meaning of it is, the four winds. Revelation 7, 1 through 4. It says this, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed a hundred and forty-four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So here we can see that the, there's angels on the, on the corners of the earth, so to speak, things that we can't see in the natural but in the spiritual, God gives us a little bit of insight here of some of the, the ministry of angelic beings. Hallelujah. Here, they're holding back judgment for, for a, a period of time, but then they'll release the winds, hallelujah, to, to uh, bring the judgment of God forth. That's why I say we're not going to be here when the, when, when the judgments are, are going on. Why? Because it's not appointed unto us to receive the judgment of God. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. The judgment of the Lord is going to go on in this world, and He's going to judge, hear me, every person, every evil act here on the face of the earth. It would be poured out. It's called the, the day of great tribulation, our great trouble, Jacob's trouble. Hallelujah. Such as the world has never seen before. And I don't know about you, but I will not be here. I'll be in the presence of of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And the only way that you're going to be there is that you've got to be found in Christ Jesus. Not found in a denomination or in a church. The church can't save you. A denomination can't save you. A preacher can't save you. A priest can't save you. Hear me. 
You've got to be, be found in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can save you. He's the one that can give you eternal salvation. Why? Because he went to the cross and died for the sin of the world. Or he died for the sin of you and me. And by faith we accept that. Hallelujah. That he took my sin and he gave me his righteousness and wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. I don't know about you, but that's a good trade. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless the Lord. But we, we thank the Lord, hallelujah, for, for angelic beings and, and some of the things that they do and some of the things that they minister. It's going to be uh, an awesome time at, at, at these events, especially as you and I sit in the balconies of heaven and see some of these things taking place. I believe the Lord will allow us to see some of these things that's going on, some of these judgments that will take place. You've seen the judgments, how God judged uh, Egypt by holding Israel captive. What did he do? They had, they had plagues of lice and flies and frogs, and, and the water was turned to blood. Well, th- during the Great Tribulation, that will make that look like a Sunday school picnic. Stop and think of this. And if, it, if just those judgments humbled Pharaoh to let the children of Israel loose, can you imagine what the judgments are going to be during the Great Tribulation? Because the Lord said, there'll not be tribulation like it, or there's none been like it since, and there won't be any afterwards. Bless the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. But Israel through uh, now is have scales over their eyes. They're blinded towards the truth of the gospel. They've rejected their Messiah the first time when he came. Am I right? They rejected him. He came as a babe in a manger. Hear me? And they thought that their Messiah, when he comes, that when he comes, you know, he's going to rule and reign out of Jerusalem. Because they had the Old Testament, the Torah, they had prophecies like Zechariah that was reading, and they thought they, you know, that Jesus was going to, going to liberate them from Roman captivity. But instead, he came and preached a message of love. He came and hung on a cross. And they couldn't understand that because, hear me, anybody that hangs on a cross is cursed of God. And understand something. He became a curse for you and for me. So that we might not come into damnation, but life and life everlasting. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But they missed Him. (coughs) Excuse me. They missed his first coming. They said, you know what? They traded Jesus off for a thief and for a murderer. Hallelujah. The, the choice belonged to them. They, see, they said, uh, you know, we've got a law that we can release one of the prisoners. And here, here's Barabbas. You can have Barabbas or you can release Jesus. And they said, crucify Christ. We'll take Barabbas. We don't want nothing to do with Christ. And who was it? Who was the King Herod? I believe no, no, it wasn't King. It wasn't Herod. Pilate. Pilate. It was Pilate. Pilate said, "I wash my hands of this because you know what? He believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Very close. Uh, uh, you know, he was very close to salvation. I, I certainly believe that. And he said, "I wash my hands of this man's blood." And they said this. Here's what the Jews said: "Let his blood be upon us and the generations after us." And can I tell you something? They have experienced nothing but judgment upon them. Are you hearing me? And, and it's going to be for a season. There's a partial blindness pulled over Israel's eyes. You know the reason why there's a partial blindness over them? There's a partial blindness put over them. Understand, Israel was given the commands of God. They was God's people. Hallelujah. Tiny Israel. Bless the Lord. They was God's people. But blindness was pulled over them because they slid away from the things of the Lord. And blindness was put over them. The Lord said, you know what? I'm going to provoke them to jealousy. And I'm going to go to a people that's not even looking for me. And I'm going to show mercy and kindness to that people. Guess who that people might be? It's called the Gentile dispensation. It's you and me. And because of their hard-heartedness, hear me, 
Hallelujah. God pulled the scales over the eyes. Hallelujah. And then he went to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles come in to a salvation knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But God is not going to leave Israel destitute. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. There's going to come a time that the Gentile dispensation will be put down and God once again will go back to Israel and deal with Israel on a personal level in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's look at this, if we would please, in Romans uh, 11th chapter. Romans 11 chapter in the 17th verse. Hallelujah. Now how many believe this is God's word? Amen. This is the word of God, I believe it's true. Can you say that? This is the word of God, I believe it's true. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Now listen to what it starts with the 17th verse. It says this, And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear." For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. How many know God's a God of goodness and a God of severity? A lot of times all you hear in some of these modern day preachers, yeah, the goodness of God. But can I tell you something? Hear me. There's a severity of God and God's given you this right here. Bless the Lord. Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell severity but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. You know what that tells me? Once saved, always saved, is blowed out of the water right here. I mean, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Hallelujah. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. He's talking about Israel. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now, we can see right here, as he says in the 26th verse, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. So you know what that tells me? It tells me that there's a partial hardening over the, over the heart of Israel. But one, time, one day, that hardening will be taken off. When will that day be? It'll be at the end of the tribulation. That's when they'll receive their Messiah. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah to the Lamb. Zechariah 12.10, listen to what, it, what, what, what Zechariah, how he sees through the eye of the Spirit. He says, And I will pour upon the house of David... And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Hallelujah. This refers uh, to the loss of an only son. Stop and think of this. If you had one son and you lost that son to death, how would you feel? I guarantee you, you'd be mourning. Or if you lost any one of your loved ones, amen? You'd be mourning and you'd be in bitterness. Hallelujah. And in fact, they killed, Israel killed their only son. And that son was Christ Jesus. Stop and think of this a second. 
Hallelujah. But that firstborn, hear me, child of God, that he, they killed, he rose from the dead. <laughs> and he'll pour out upon them grace and mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So Israel will once again be grafted back in to the true vine. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God that Israel will be saved in Jesus' name during the great tribulation in the name of the Lord. That's why, hear me, when uh, Iran, of course, uh, you're seeing a lot going on over in Israel right now. I mean, a lot lot of prophecy being fulfilled, even as we're talking. And, uh, you know, Iran, uh, it's a good possibility that they already have nuclear weapons. You know, only only God knows. But uh, they want to annihilate Israel. But I know that Israel will not be annihilated because they're going to be a key player in the end time. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It will look like they're going to be annihilated in the great <coughs> tribulation. But can I tell you something? God's going to stop in or step in and intervene Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they'll say, how'd you get those scars in your hands? He said, I got, it in, I got them from, from my friend, in the house of my friends. Hallelujah. You see, they put him on the cross, but they'll accept him now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah Hallelujah to the Lamb. Aren't you glad that, hear me, the firstborn they might have killed, nailed him to a cross, but the grave didn't keep him down, but he rose on the third day. Hallelujah. Now he's ascended to the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and for me in the name of the Lord Jesus. And one day he's going to pour out his mercy and his grace upon Israel. Now some would say, you mean tell me Israelites, some of the Israelites can't get saved? There's there's Israelites getting saved even as we're talking. Hallelujah. God has always had a nucleus. Hear me. Who was it? Elijah said, Lord, I'm the only prophet left in the land. You know, he's having a pity party with himself. Jezebel was after him, ready to knock him off and Kill him. And he said, I'm the, I'm the only prophet in the land. And God said, hush your mouth. He said, I've got 500 or 700 prophets hid in caves. He's always had a nucleus. And can I tell you something? Hallelujah. He's got a nucleus in Israel even to this day in the name of the Lord. And can I tell you something? He's got a nucleus of Christians in the United States of America. While many of the churches are gone by the wayside, God will always have a nucleus church in the name of Jesus. And I pray to God that this is one of them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We want to do what the Word of God tells us to do. We want to preach what the Word of God tells us to preach. We don't whitewash it or we don't, we don't compromise it, bless the Lord, or candy coat it. But we tell it just like it is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. In Colossians 1.18 it says, And He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have preeminence. Talking about the Son of God, resurrecting. Hallelujah. Zechariah thirteen six says, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in your hands? Then he will answer, Those, uh, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Hallelujah. Israel at this time, as I said, will be grafted back in to the true vine. Jeremy, don't want to bust your bubble, but you don't have the true vine, brother. Maybe spiritually you do Hear me, hallelujah to the Lamb. But your business is not the true vine. Hallelujah, Jesus is the true vine. Thank God your business is hooked on him, amen? Hooked into that. Bless the Lord. Now you got something to say to me? I know after the service over you say, well, blah, 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 blah. blah and you, <laughs> you think about it. Bless the Lord. Mark 13, 28 through, uh, through 29. He says this, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branches is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you in like manner, when you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the door. I'm going to know the fig tree represents Israel in the second coming. That's what he's talking about here. When the branches are put forth, uh, or, or when the branches puts forth leaves, Hallelujah. It refers to the rebirth of Israel. Hallelujah. Israel became a nation back in what? 1948? 1948 became a nation. For Think of this. 1900 years there was nothing produced. Hear me, child of God, from this fig tree. Now, from its roots, hear me, 
leaves are starting to sprout on, out on it. Can I tell you something? I believe in 1948, hear me, the prophetic clock started, started ticking. Amen. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, prophecy has been, been, been so fast after 1948. Boom, 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 all the way up to where we're at right now. And I'm telling you this, hear me, we are so close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that if we, if we, if we really knew what, what time he was going to come, a dead set time or date, we would probably be shocked. Would probably be, he could come tonight. Are you hearing me? He could come tonight. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Israel, as we, you look at Israel, it's God's prophetic time calendar. Look at Israel and see what's going on around Israel. Hallelujah. We know prophecies are being fulfilled even as we're speaking. Bless the Lord. And the talk's clicking, 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 clicking. Hallelujah to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some might say, well, what time is it, Pastor Martin? I say it's time to seek the Lord while he may be found in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because one day it's going to be shut down. Hallelujah. When the trump of God sounds, hear me, the dead in Christ rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord. Look at me. The Gentile dispensation will be put down. Hear me, child of God. Bless the Lord. Yes, there'll be many saved during the tribulation, but understand me. Hallelujah. God will, will, will once again visit his people, Israel. Hallelujah. The where they'd be grafted back into the true vine in Jesus' name. What an exciting time it is to be a Christian today. Amen. Seeing these things happening. What an exciting time. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Mark 13, 30 says, Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Now when you read that and you think, well, he's talking to them back then. This generation, hallelujah, sh uh, uh, shall not pass till they, they see these things done. Well, hear me. Hallelujah. I admit that, that uh, A.D. 70, that uh, uh, Jerusalem was sacked, Israel was sacked, but it's got many, many overtones talking about here, child of God, hallelujah, of the generation that sees these prophecies being fulfilled. That generation will see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. One of the greatest keys is when Israel become a nation in 1948. That generation, how long's a generation? I was born 49. Stop and think of this. Hallelujah, so he can't be far off. I'm not setting no dates, hear me, I'm not, but I do know one thing. I know when, it's, when summer's about ready to come, or I know when spring's about ready to come. Why? Because you start seeing the tulips come up out of the ground, you start seeing the grass getting green, you start seeing the buds on the trees, the pussy willows start coming out. All of a sudden, the birds start coming back from being down south. And you know that, hey, guess what? Spring's in the air. It might not be here yet, but it's, it, it's in the air. It's coming. Bless the Lord. So we know that it's coming. Amen. 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 We know Jesus is coming soon. Yes. Why? Because spring's in the air. Uh, we right. know it. Spring yeah. is in the air. You can smell it. You know that it's coming. Bless the Lord forevermore and evermore. Hallelujah. But what I said, what an exciting time. It is to be a Christian. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you, I believe we are the terminal generation that will see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're the terminal generation that will hear the trump of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But can I tell you this? Bless the Lord. I want to see as many saved as what we can possibly save. In our, we can't do it, but we can lead them to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I believe it's in, in the supernatural world there's urgencies going on. I believe there's red lights flashing off and on. Hallelujah. It's not a time to relax and drift away from the things of the Lord. It's a time to get up and get red hot for God and begin to proclaim the gospel to your neighbors, to your loved ones, to your co-workers. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us not be bashful, but let us have the boldness of God's Holy Spirit to proclaim Jesus is coming soon. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Jesus puts a seal upon the, uh, the prophecy by saying in the 31st verse, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. His word is truth. What we've just read through those scriptures, they're going to come to pass. Amen. I don't care if you don't believe them or not. It makes no difference. 
Jesus said it. He spoke it. He's going to bring it to pass in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, his word will not return unto him void, the Bible says, but it will accomplish the very thing he sends it to do. Mark 13, 32 and 33. But of that day and that hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when uh, the time is. How many know it's foolish to put dates and times on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Although many has put dates and times on them, and you know what? Their prophecies went up in the air like smoke. And, uh, you know, people that set times of when the Lord's going to come back and when he's going to appear and when the trump of God's going to sound, they do more damage to the kingdom of God than they do any other thing. Why? Because when it don't happen, it gives the sinner, hear me, an occasion to blaspheme God. They'll say, there, look at that. This guy predicted that Jesus, and, and understand me, there's been many that predicted that Jesus is coming. You even got him now predicting that he's going to come. Are you hearing me? But understand me, if it don't happen, it gives the enemy a, a, a great occasion to blaspheme the God that we serve. And, and even those in the body of Christ, bless God, they'll start listening to some of these prophecies and saying, well, Jesus is coming May 8th, uh, 19, uh, or 2015. Well, uh, 2015 comes around and we're still here. And, the, and it's kind of like Chicken Little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And you keep hearing that over and over and over again. And before long, you know, they say, yeah, we heard that before and, and what have you. But I'm telling you, hear me. Bless the Lord. It's going to come like a thief in the night. And surely as I'm standing here, there'll be many empty homes one day. And it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be a year from now, two years, three years. We don't set no timetables. But there'll be kids leave the house. Hear me? And parents stay behind. Why? Because children are innocent. Are you hearing me? I said children are innocent. Many that have not come to the age of accountability will be taken right straight up into glory in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the chaos that will be going on when, the, when, when millions and millions of people will disappear off the face of the earth? What kind of chaotic state will this world be in? Hallelujah. I don't know and I don't care because I'm not going to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. And it will be. Yeah. There'll be nothing but chaos, you know, on the highways and in the airways, uh, air controllers, whatever. You know, uh, people be disappeared all over. And as someone say, you mean tell me you really believe that stuff in the Bible? And I said, yes, I really believe it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I certainly do believe it. You got to believe this book by faith. Right. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. You never get to first base on the grounds of unbelief. Hallelujah. I believe my name's written in the Lamb's book of life. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me, for my sins. Therefore, he's given me his life. He's given me his righteousness. Hallelujah. I believe, hear me, I'm seated with him in heavenly places. Bless the Lord. I identify with his death and his resurrection. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I believe that. How do, how do you know that? Because His Spirit bears witness with my spirit that we are children of the living God. It's not a hope so, maybe so, but it's a no-so salvation that we have in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. But, you know, be very aware or, or very careful when people start setting times, the blood moons and all different types of things. I mean, we're hearing all this stuff going on. Hear me. Hallelujah. The emphasis is not on the time when he comes. The emphasis, if you look at it, is watch and pray. That's what the emphasis is. Watch and pray. Let me ask this before we close. How many people are watching and praying right now? Watching and look, we're waiting for the return of the Lord. Very few. Are you hearing me? Understand something. Hallelujah. That's what the emphasis is on, is Watching and praying. Hallelujah. I'm watching the signs of times. I love to watch news. Some people say hate news, but I love to watch news because I like to see what's going on in the Middle East. 
Hear me. I like to see what's happening around Israel because, as I said, that's the prophetic time calendar is watch Israel. Look, stop, uh, stop and think of this a second. Hallelujah. Who is it? John Boehner. I believe it was. He's got Netanyahu coming over to, to speak to the Congress. But Obama says, I'm not even meeting with him. I'm not even meeting with him. Which tells me one thing. Hear me. If we turn our backs upon Israel, that's our last straw. I seriously believe that. That is going to be America's last straw if we turn our back upon Israel. We have got to be allies with Israel. And how many people today, hear me, in the world, and I'm talking about Christians, that hate Israel. They could care less about the Jews. Matter of fact, when hurricanes come, they blame it on the Jews. When storms happen, well, it's because of the Jews. When economic failures, they call, point their fingers to the Jews. You know what? They did that during the Romans' times. The, the Jews were the faults of everything. During uh, uh, Hitler's times, the Jews were the fault of everything. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. But folk, stop and think. We are living in the end time. No generation has ever seen prophetic utterances come to pass like this generation that we're living in right now. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you, glad, aren't you thankful that you got some inside information? You know, not all the world knows this. But you know what? I've got some inside information. And I've got something to tell somebody. And you've got something to tell somebody. In the name of Jesus. How many in here can truthfully say, I'm glad that I know 110%, hallelujah, that if the trump sounds, I'm out of here. Let me see your hands. Amen. I'm out of here. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. I believe everybody in here. Can we give the Lord a hand, clap of praise, glory to God. <laughs> hallelujah. So let's not worry about things in this world, because worry is not going to do us a nickel's worth of good, except send us to an early grave and stop and think of this. Hear me, tomorrow might never come. You ever stop and think of that a second? You know, some times we're worried about tomorrow, and tomorrow might not even be tomorrow for you. You might be in the presence of the Lord tomorrow. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> I said, wouldn't that be wonderful? Bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe, you know, if we go the way of the grave, we don't lose. We go the way of the trumpet. Hear me. <laughs> we're not going to lose. So we don't lose no way, neither way. We're winners. Why? Because Christ is a winner and he's made us winners in the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I'm excited. I was excited to minister this tonight. Praise the Lord. I, I just got off the phone with John Muncy. He was talking to me on the phone and uh, we was talking back and forth and he kind of pumped me up on prophecy and this, that and the other and what have you and different things and uh, we was just having a heyday and he was wanting to schedule some uh, revival coming up and I said maybe we can get something going in the spring of the year or what have you. Praise the Lord. I said, maybe an Easter camp meeting or something like that. You know, I said, we'll just see what the Lord does. Praise God. Hallelujah. Stand your feet with me if you would, please. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, so thankful that we're saved. So thankful for what you did for mankind by sending your son to die on the cross. God, we know it's a, a simple story. But God, it's a real story. And Father, we truly thank you and praise you for the childlike faith that you have delivered into our hearts. That Lord, we just accept it by faith and believe it. And God, we receive it in Jesus' name. So Lord, we don't want to ever forget where we come from and where we're going to in the name of the Lord. But Father, I'm asking that you would raise up labors together in this end time. That we would roll up our sleeves, Lord. And be bold in our witness before God Almighty. Let us be harmless as doves and wise as serpents. Father, in Jesus' name, let our lives, God, hallelujah, point people to the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Lord